This is Paul, City Sailing. Uh, this morning I want to talk about yachting rope, something that we take for granted. Um, I want to look at different kinds of rope and the properties of um, each rope. Let's get straight into it and have a look. So, rope construction can either be twisted, which is traditional, twist and plated, or braided. And we'll look at each one individually. So, a traditional three-strand twisted rope is individual fibres are twisted into yarns the yarns are then twisted into strands and the strands are then twisted into ropes and what we see is traditional three strand on the ropes so the fibers are twisted in the same direction as the strands and the yarns are twisted in the opposite direction and this gives strength keeps the line from kinking and holding its shape so the direction of twist of a rope is called the lay of the rope So three strands can be twisted, a uh, three strand twisted line can be laid either right or left. So a left laid is twisted anti-clockwise on the left hand picture there and the right laid is twisted clockwise. So you can see the lay is going clockwise on the picture on the right. So a three strand rope should always be coiled with the lay, lay of the line. Most three strand ropes are right laid. And if you don't um, coil it with the lay of the uh, the lie, it will end up kinked. So the rope is um, traditionally made on a rope walk. And this ropery is the historic dockyard in Chatham, which is a quarter of a mile long, a uh, double rope house, and now is the only working traditional rope walk um, from the age of the sail to survive anywhere in the world. And if you go there, you can see them making ropes. And uh, we have some ropes that were made in the dockyard. So the ends of natural fibres won't melt. So if you get your cigarette lighter um, or your flame, it won't melt the end. So to stop it all kinking and coming back, um, you can either whip or splice. And in other videos, we'll look at um, sail makers whipping and splicing. And the right hand, that is called a back splice. Um, the problem with the back splice is that it doubles the thickness of the rope. And if you need it to go through a block quickly, it will snag on the back splice. So I'm not over keen on you on the back splicing. I'd much rather um, to have a whipping or a sail maker's whipping. So three strand twisted rope. Um, let's look at the positive features. Um, twisted ropes are designed to stretch. It's inexpensive compared to braided rope. Easy to splice, which is joining two ropes together or making a loop. The negative features, it's not as strong as braided rope. The strands can separate under abrasion. The rope can cause twisting when under load. The rope is not as perfect, it's not as perfectly round like braided ropes, so you can see the grooves in the ropes, um, so it can jam when running through blocks. Hockles can form in the rope, and these can't be removed, and the rope's permanently damaged, so the rope comes together, it twists, and you get these, they look like kinks, and they're called hockles in there, um, and they're quite, so you just can't get rid of them. When selecting a three-strand rope, look for the following characteristics. It should be firm, but flexible. A firm rope resists chafe, snagging and wear, and also prevents kinking. Test the rope by flexing it a bit. Um, it should require an effort to open the lay, so to make a gap between the lay, um, to open it up should make an effort. Um, little for small size, about a quarter of an inch, and, but for a bigger rope it should be quite hard to separate up to make a hole in the rope. Um, if it opens easily, it's too soft and it won't last. It'd be easier to splice, but it'd just be too soft. The three strands should lay smoothly and uniformly within the rope. So it should feel smooth and it should look uniform and look nice. So they all work together and it, it, it wears evenly. So the characteristics. Have a look down the rope, sight down the rope. If it appears weavy and uneven, there's a high risk. There's a high or low strand that the rope is out of lay. Don't buy it. So if it looks wrong, don't buy it. Nylon and polyester fibres are very fine, smaller than human hair and therefore fragile. They should be laid into rope with sufficient twists and in the yarns and strands to form a round, firm, balanced structure that resists snagging and wear. Push your thumbnail into the strand. So get your thumbnail, push it into the strand. It shouldn't be soft. The rope should be heat stabilized to precondition the rope to keep shrinking and hardening to a minimum. So let's look at plated ropes. And they are the, what it says in the tin. It's rope that's plated. So they're usually made using eight strands plaited together in pairs. Four of the strands will have a left-handed lay 
and the other four will be twisted to the right. These are then paired and plated together. The plated or multi-plate rope types are ideal for mooring and anchoring due to their strength and stretch. So positive features, the rope won't rotate under load, so eliminating hocking and other problems with twisted ropes. They have an excellent braking strain and shock absorbent, and they're stretched to about 40% for braking, so they've got a bit of stretch in them, so they're great for anchoring and tying your boat up. They avoid twisting and hardening problems that occur with three-strand ropes. Negative features, not as strong as a braided rope. The strands can separate under abrasion. The rope is not as perfectly round like braided rope, so it can drown running through blocks. So let's have a look at braided rope. So the positive features, the braided rope is designed not to stretch. Easily run through blocks because of their smooth shape. Design makes them strong, stronger than the equivalent um, size twisted line. Negative features, they're quite difficult to splice. They can snag when using a docking line if the pilings are rough, so if anything rough will snatch or snag against it. So the braided rope, the core and the cover of the braided ropes are often of different materials, allowing the optimum properties for each. So if we look at the left hand, we can see the yarn um, for both the outer and the inner. We can see the outer shell and the core. When you pull it tight, the outer shell shrinks and it grabs on the core, which gives it strength. When selecting braiding ropes, look for the characteristics. They should be firm enough to resist tray, snagging and wear, but flexible enough for easy handling. The yarns and strands should lay smoothly and uniformly in the ropes so they work together and wear evenly. Unevenness can be detected by sighting down the rope. If it appears wavy or uneven, don't buy it. The amount of directional twist in the yarns is essential for top performance. Look at the individual yarns that make up each strands. Well-rounded yarns resist snagging and wear better than flat yarns. So the characteristics for a braided rope. Most braids have an inner core with an outer jacket. As the line is used in flex, the core might tend to work its way through the outer jacket, resulting in a higher hernia. So if the inner core sticks through, um, it's called a hernia, grip the rope with your fingers and thumbs about two inches apart, and violently flex the selection a dozen or more times. If the jacket opens and you can see or exposes the inner core, um, it's approaching herniation. The inner core should lay evenly in the jacket, lightly grip the rope, Run it through your hands, it shouldn't feel lumpy or soft. The rope should feel firm and round. The rope should be heat stabilised to precondition it, like the other rope we spoke about, um, to keep shrinking and hardening to a minimum. Synthetic fibres. So man-made cordage comes in many colours, so you can colour code your yacht halyards and your sheets so it's easier to see what rope does what job on your boat. Here, are, here we have the halyards um, color coded, color coded. Sorry, so synthetic fibers, nylon. So the advantage of nylon, it's the strongest of all ropes in common use. Stretches so absorbs shock loads. It's resistant to chemicals and resistant to ultraviolet. So it's used in mooring lines and anchor lines. Polyester, it's a high strength when a steady force is applied. Low stretch. High. Highly resistant to chemicals, oil, grease, and resistant to ultraviolet. So you'll find that in jib and main sheets. So synthetic fibers, fibers such as Kevlar, Tyron, and Technora. So these are um, non-stretch. They have remarkable strength-to-weight ratio, um, even to the extent that they can replace wire rigging. Can be easily damaged by abrasion. So anything um, abrading to it or chafing, it can damage it. So it's sheathed in a tough polyester. It's resistant to chemicals and it can be used in jib and main sheets. Vectron, this latest in line of high strength materials. Um, again, it can replace wire rigging, easy damage by abrasion. Fatigue strength should not be a problem. It is really expensive. So it can be used in jib and main sheets. Polyprop, propylene or polyprop advantages. It's the only rope that floats. So a heaving line, it's really useful. Uh, for a dinghy painter, it's really useful because it floats on the surface. It's less expensive, resistance to chemicals, and it's used as lines, as I said. So to cut your uh, rope, an electric hot knife can cut thin synthetic rope, melts both ends, sealing them, and stops them unravelling. You could get a gas hot knife. I used to have one of these on the boat, and it was really useful. Um, you use cigarette lighter fuel in it, and that goes to the gas, and you turn it on. 
and you have a hot knife which is portable around the boat so you don't need to plug it in then we look at some natural fibers um, natural fibers soft ropes manila manila hemp cotton rough ropes like sisal or jute the advantage is the resistance to sunlight they won't melt there's little stretch um, and it holds knots well disadvantage it must be stored dry because um, it gets mildewy and chemicals will cause deterioration in the rope so you need to wear gloves when handling um, these ropes because it's quite rough on the hands um, and it's quite easy to make a decorative rope work that you see in um, some canal boats so that's the end of the types of rope I hope you enjoyed that um, if you did enjoy it um, if you do the coffee that would be great um, and watch our other videos with City Sailing. So the video that ties in with this one will be the video on knots. So we'll go through knots, um, the uses of knots, and how to tie them, and how to untie them, and where we should use them around the boat. So again, thanks very much. Hope to see you soon. Um, this is Paul, City Sailing, out.